Welcome to A Seeking Heart with Allison Jingris, distributed through Breadbox Media. I am joined today by the author of a new book, Joyful Encounters with Mary, A Woman's Guide to Living the Mysteries of the Rosary by Mar uh, Marion Press, Maria Gallagher. Maria, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. This is quite an honor. Oh, I, that's sweet to call it an honor. It's my honor because... I have followed you on social media for a long time. We're both Catholic mom contributors. I feel like we we run in very many of the same circles. So it's always exciting to get to meet people. And as we were just discussing before we went live, we're gonna, God willing, I always say, like St. James says, like if God wills, we will hopefully be meeting um, just in a few weeks at the Catholic Marketing Network, Catholic Writers Guild conferences. I have at attended a couple of those when they were in Pennsylvania and absolutely loved them. Maria, did you ever get to go to the Catholic Marketing? I, I did attend the one in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and it was outstanding. And I got to meet so many of the other CatholicMom.com writers, and it was a thrill. Yeah, it was uh, actually, so we were there at the same time, but you know what? There are so many people that yes. we just didn't, I don't think we connected. So I Good look night. forward to connecting this time with you. Again, today we're talking about Maria's new book, Joyful Encounters, with Mary. But before we jump into the book, Bria, for those who are new to who you are, tell us a little bit about yourself. Certainly. Um, I am a cradle Catholic, um, but I am also a revert um, oh, in large you. measure um, because uh, when I was in my early adulthood, I went to mass sometimes on Sunday, but not all the time, unfortunately. And I really stepped away from the sacrament of reconciliation. Uh, for a long, long time. Yeah. Um, but thankfully, um, actually through the recitation of the Most Holy Rosary, I got back into the full practice of my faith. And I've been there ever since. I consecrated myself to the Immaculate Heart of Mary a long time ago. And I think that Mary has really guided my path. So for my day job, I work full time advocating for pregnant women and their children. Um, at the State House in uh, Pennsylvania. Oh, and wow. I also am a member of the Worldwide Curcio Movement, which is a lay run Catholic movement, which helps people to draw closer to Jesus. And so um, this book, I think, was a uh, byproduct of my involvement in Curcio. And I'm so very happy that it happened. Oh, that is so beautiful. I made my Curcio. Mm, 20 years ago now I have to think about because I had little people my people were little <laughs> at the time and now they're in their yeah. 20s and it really was one of the catalysts to get me I also am a revert so to get me from my lukewarmness because I had started going back to church but I still wasn't really participating you know I would bring my bulletin in on the way in and and read it during the readings make my to-do list during the homily and then leave mass and be like, I got nothing out of going. Gee, I wonder why, Allison, because we're not <laughs> focusing. I also struggled a little bit to add the beautiful um, prayers and traditions of our church. And one of those being the rosary. Like, growing up, I was kind of, we used the rosary. We prayed as a family only during thunderstorms. And then true story, Maria, my house was struck by lightning. It was... <laughs> So I was like, oh, these don't work. <laughs> Just kind of like <laughs> discarded them. But they did because the house was fine. It did not burn to the ground. It was you know, protected. But I didn't see it at that point at that time. And the other time I only prayed the rosary was when I went to visit my grandmother who lived kind of like 45 minutes away, which seemed so far away when I was a child and I'd get homesick. And she'd tell me to pray the rosary to fall asleep. And I'd say, oh, you're right, Grammy. This is a great idea. I'll be so bored. I'll be out in a second. But again, my wise grandmother understood the power of the rosary, the beauty and the power of the rosary. Now, you said that that really, um, it was a catalyst for you and it kind of helped you come back to the faith. So I would love to do it. And I get this question all the time. So I would love your take on how did you include the rosary into your day uh, i struggle on i work for family rosary and i my job is to tell people 
to to pray the rosary every day like i know the importance of it but even i struggle to find a way to incorporate it every day how how do you do that maria how how have you incorporated that into your life well i was very fortunate because at the time of my reversion i had a commute to work on a bus and so ah. there wasn't much to occupy my mind on the bus except for the rosary. So I would pray it silently on the bus during my commute. And so that started a practice for me of praying the rosary in the morning, nice. which is really best for me because if I wait till evening time, I'm likely to fall asleep praying it. <laughs> um, and so I continued that when my daughter was born um, and God only blessed me with the one daughter, but she was the one that was meant for me. Um, I started praying the rosary while I was nursing her. And that was a really good time to do it because I was calm and collected, seated, and I could really focus on Mary. So I think you just have to make time for it. You have to put it into your daily schedule. Uh, if necessary, put it on your calendar um, because that. it's so very important to connect with Mary and to connect with Jesus as a result of your close relationship with Mary. And so your your book focuses, we, we know there's four sets of mysteries, the glorious, the joyful, the sorrowful, and the luminous. And your book focuses on the joyful mysteries. Is that correct? That's correct. And the reason that I did that was because I really felt my greatest connection with Mary through the joyful mysteries because I had been through a pregnancy. I had been through childbirth. I had been through the baptism of my child, which is similar to the presentation in the temple. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I experienced um, the disappearance of my child at one point. And so that was the finding of the child Jesus in the temple for me. There was a period of time when I didn't know where my daughter was for two weeks. And I really relied heavily oh on gosh, Mary yeah. and through my prayer journal to get me through that. And thankfully, I located her um, through the prompts, I think, that God gave me and that Mary gave me and through the work of a private detective. And I found out where she was, thankfully. Um, and all glory to God for that, um, because if I hadn't been relying on God, I, I don't know what I would have done during that period of time. And I wrote the book so that people can relate to it, whether they have a strong relationship with Mary or they don't. I know a lot of people have a strained relationship with their own mothers, and so they find difficulty relating to Mary. Mm -hmm. And I say Mary is the perfect mother, and you can start all over again with her. You shouldn't feel as if you have a distance with Mary because of your own relationship with your mother or lack of a relationship with your mother. Um, and I also wrote it so that people can see through their own lives the connection that they make with the Blessed Mother and with those joyful mysteries of the rosary. Because I think that if you have not been through that experience of having a child go missing for two weeks, and, and I hope and pray that you don't, at least I think you've had that experience where you were at a park or at a store and suddenly you look around and, oh my gosh, where is my child or where are my children? And there is that moment of panic and anguish and worry. And that's what Mary experienced. And I, I think a lot of us, put Mary in an ivory tower and she is sinless. She was the mother of Jesus, no doubt, but she was also very human. And I yeah. think that we can relate to her on that human basis and on that mother to mother basis. I think you make a good point about relating to her as a human basis. To me, Mary was this porcelain statue, Our Lady of Grace in my mother's bedroom. My mother did not have a strong faith. Uh, we, again, we only prayed the rosary um, during the, the thunderstorms, and we only pray the Our Fathers and Hail Marys. I didn't even know there was mysteries to this beautiful tradition, to this beautiful prayer um, until much later in my life. So to me, Mary was this beautiful porcelain statue. I did not realize who, her humanity, that that she is 100% human. Like she had this this grace, she's full of grace, and I, I love the, the whole concept of grace, this is God's Holy Spirit living within us, and she embraced and held on to every ounce of that grace, which is what made her so special. But we also have that grace that we can hold on to. So I love that you've made this connection, that she's not this porcelain figure, that she was flesh and blood, that she was uh, this mother who worried and 
um, had to take care of her child. You know, she had to feed him and teach him things. I was a homeschooling mom for a while, and we always looked at her as the, the, the you know, the number one homeschooler because we knew that she had to have been part of Jesus's education, part of every piece of his life. And that she wants to be part of every piece of our life. And I also uh, love, again, that, that reminding people that your relationship with Mary, your relationship, I mean, your, your own mother, even your own father, have no bearing and should not. And I've had uh, my own situations where I struggle with my mother, I struggle with my father, and then I couldn't see God as loving and trustworthy and married the same way. But you, re you remind us that like this is a whole different relationship and this is an opportunity to have those positive uh, uh, family relationships, paternal and maternal relationships. I love that. So tell us a little bit about the actual structure of your book. We're talking today with Maria Gallagher, Joyful Encounters with Mary, A Woman's Guide to Living the Mysteries of the Rosary, out now from Mary and Press. So tell us a little bit about the structure. Well, when I reread the book, I thought to myself, oh, my goodness, there is a lot of me in this. <laughs> and there is. But I use the examples from my life to try to connect with other people and to help them to connect with Mary. Uh, for instance, when I was young, my father was such a gentle, kind soul. But unfortunately, he was plagued by a lot of unemployment in his life. Oh. So I would pray the rosary that um, we would actually get a paycheck that week and that we would actually eat that week. Um, and so I knew early on that God was my provider and that Mary was a bridge to God. Um, and I talk about um, different aspects of my faith life. And then um, there's a portion of the book that deals with uh, scriptural texts about Mary so that you can learn more about Mary through Holy Scripture. And I think that is so very important to yes. read the Bible and to learn more about Mary. And then I have saintly encounters with Mary where I go through uh, different saints like um, St. Bernadette and St. Therese, the little flower, and how they connected with Mary and how you can use those examples in your own life to draw a closer relationship with Mary. And then I talk about different virtues and a lot of my friends say these are their favorite chapters when I delve into humility and my struggles with humility. Oh, my gosh. It is a daily struggle, if not oh, an yes. hourly struggle with me. With humility. <laughs> um, I talk about generosity um, and, and I have a wonderful example of generosity from my own life where um, my mother had a cousin who um, was very um, I, I think uh, very fond of my mother. And what we did not know was that my mother's cousin was buying savings bonds for my sister and myself for many years. And we only found this out after she passed away. And we got a letter from a lawyer saying that um, we had been bequeathed um, and, and a, uh, a gift from uh, my mother's cousin, Valeria. And as it turned out, one day we we got a package and it was savings bond after savings bond, thousands of dollars worth of savings bonds wow. that wow. she had bought for us. And, and I had never even met the woman. And I call wow. her my ballerina benefactor because she was a ballerina. She was a ballet dancer. And that I thought was going to be my college fund. And I was very academically focused and I really wanted to go to college. And a little while later, my father came to us and said, because of his unemployment, he and my mother really needed the money for us to be able to survive. And he asked wow. me as the older sister, could I give over that money to my parents? And and I thought about it and I thought to myself, well, you know what? I think that God is calling me to do this. So I'm going to give the money over to my parents. And as it turned out, I won a full scholarship to college. That yeah, goosebumps, Maria. Everything. Like literally goosebumps. It paid for everything. So God took care of everything. Wow. And God oh my took care of everything in that wonderful way that he has. So I'm very fortunate and very blessed. You know, that story reminds, I was just, just this week talking to somebody about a, a close family relative who is, is in 
desperate financial straits and holding on to every penny. And we went through something in 2015 where we were on the brink of losing everything, like just financial ruin. And the Lord said a couple things to me. One is I needed to tell my husband how deeply in debt I had gotten us in credit cards because I was trying to hide it, you know, taking more credit cards mm -hmm. to pay the other credit cards, you know, robbing from Peter to pay for Paul, as the saying goes. And um, just really struggling. And, and one of the things that he, he said to me also in my heart was to keep being generous. Regardless of what little I had, I had to keep being generous, keep giving to the church, keep giving to those who asked, and being very generous with, again, what little we had. And I am convinced that it was our generosity and trust in the Lord to provide that got us through i mean just miraculous things happened after that maria just create like people coming an old an, uh, someone that we knew a long long time ago coming to our door telling us i inherited money i want you to have some like who how does no, that doesn't happen to people like right. these crazy like oh, like like your story like this trusting in god this this turning to our faith and that his divine providence is incredible and i'm trying to explain this to this family member and they're just it's just such an amazing hard concept and even though i had example after example of how god provided even though i gave away i think that virtue of generosity is uh it's easy when you have surplus it's yes. not when you have just the widow's might sure right? But I, oh my gosh, I totally have goosebumps from that story of how <laughs> God, how God blessed you. Uh, so what is your overall hope uh, that the reader will take away when they spend time with joyful encounters with Mary? Well, I think my hope is that the reader will achieve greater joy in their lives as a result of their stronger relationship with Mary. And um, I wrote this during the lockdown phase of the, phase of the pandemic. Oh, and wow. I felt as if a lot of people lacked joy, especially during that time. And I felt like, gosh, if people could just connect with Mary, they could find that joy that they're searching for because Mary leads to Jesus and Jesus is joy for us. And so that's my hope for my readers. And I pray for all of my readers Oh, and I, I hope that. that they can achieve. And when I talk about joy, I'm not talking about passing happiness, like you get ice cream that day and you're happy for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking funny. about the lasting joy, which is peace of soul. And I know that um, just the other day, I was in a garden at my parish praying the rosary with a friend. Beautiful. And I felt that joy in that moment. And that's what I want for other people. Oh my goodness. I love that. And I know that the readers will, uh, will feel that. I love that you pray for them. Your story is so compelling and um, your faith is contagious. And I'm thrilled to be able to spend this time with you, Maria, to share your beautiful new book, Joyful Encounters with Mary. It'll have links in all the show notes and how you can purchase it. But I would like to know, um, Maria, from you, like how can people continue to keep in touch with you, to see what's next, or to even, you know, tell you how amazing your book is. Sure. <laughs> um, they can go to my website, which is basically a blog. Um, it's mariavgallagher.com, mariavgallagher.com. Um, and uh, you can also connect with me on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. Um, just look for Maria V. Gallagher. Um, on Twitter, I actually go by my maiden name, Maria E. Vital. Um, but the rest of the, the platforms, it's Maria V. Gallagher, and I'd be happy to connect with you and to journey with you as you journey toward Jesus through Mary. Oh my gosh, I love it. And you can also keep in touch with both of us over at catholicmom.com, a little plug in there for our Catholic Mom website. Uh, Maria, thank you so much for making the time for us today. It has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Well, I invite everybody to go check out Joyful Encounters with Mary, A Woman's Guide to Living the Mysteries of the Rosary, out now from Marian Press and from our wonderful guest, Maria Gallagher. You have been listening to A Seeking Heart with Allison Jingris, distributed through Breadbox Media. God bless.